Going somewhere new and different and foreign to you with a different culture should rightfully feel daunting to you. Different rules, laws, and languages define the culture of these regions and have his many historical differences throughout the world. And these are all unfamiliar and almost impossible to know from where you might have grown up and all the differences that might have been somewhere else. And that's why I have this great tip that came up with my wife and I and how we travel that I'd like to share with you in this video. But first, let me introduce myself. I'm Don. If you love travel and adventure, you've come to the right channel. This is where I'll share my experiences and my tips to make sure your next trip is one worth remembering. If you haven't already, make sure you hit that like button. It helps others discover my video and really lets me know that this video is heading in the right direction and I'll make sure that I develop future content in the same fashion. Also, check out my subreddit linked below in the description. If you're curious about our upcoming trips, you might be interested in joining us or about the things we might be able to share in the future, or you might be able to share your own experiences on the same subreddit. Hope to see you there. Have you ever went somewhere new and by the end of the trip you felt you missed something important? Or winging it without firm plans, trying to discover new things and finding, oops, you didn't plan right, you missed something, you didn't have a permit for something and now you missed out. This happens to the best of travelers and why many today still prefer to do on the rails travel, which is the group tours, pre-packaged tours through different agencies where you are on the rails and you experience things in a manner that a lot of other people experience them and it's very commercialized and set up in a specific manner. You don't have to worry about things going wrong. They're set up in such a way that they are for the masses. But what if I told you there's a better way? Before you start traveling anywhere, the first thing you're gonna do is reach out to the internet. Search for certain areas or things that go on there and things of interest but there's only so much you can find on the internet. It takes someone that not only is local, but someone with intricate knowledge of the culture and the history, and someone who speaks your language well enough that they can communicate all these things to you. These individuals consider themselves to be paid guides and can be found throughout the world. However, they can be difficult to find and difficult to vet as there's no consistent way to find them in certain countries. I'll get into that shortly. Private guides can help you with learning some of the local language and being able to translate for you when you need it. Providing transportation for you. Understanding the local culture and history and all the details that that brings. Lastly, to be able to recommend places for you to visit extra that may not be on the guided portion of the tour. This also includes places to avoid which might be dangerous parts of the city and places really as a tourist you have no place or want to be. When traveling somewhere new my wife and I will hire a private guide that is flexible for what we want to do there. Often these private guides will have recommended itineraries for you to follow based on the time that you're visiting and how long you're going to be visiting for. And this is a great starter for building your itinerary and maybe you have additional things you want to visit or maybe you've visited places or not interested in certain places in itinerary. They're all they're usually very flexible and customizable. All you have to do is ask. The private guide really is just giving this to you as a starting point and it's a great place to customize from there. Starting with a private guide really gives you a strong lay of the land. As you go through your itinerary and visiting all these places, you learn lots of different things, have the ability to ask dynamic questions based on what you're observing, and this leads to a lot of questions that you wouldn't be able to ask a placard or someone who's not knowledgeable, maybe someone who's working at the museum and doesn't really know, understand all the things and intricacies that you're asking. These guys have a lot of historical knowledge because it's their job and this is what you're paid to do and can really fill in a lot of details for you. Also, they can fill you in on cultural norms, things that you really shouldn't break, things that may not be actual laws, but if you start doing them, you're gonna probably get on, rub some people the wrong way. They're gonna stare you down and you really don't wanna stand out as a tourist in some countries. It's just generally not good to be a tourist. I mean, you want to kind of fit in anyways. And so they'll make sure that you have the capability of fitting in the best you can. Also, be sure to leave yourself extra buffer days or extra days at the end of your itinerary to explore on your own. Even if you do have guided services, you'll find as you're learning things on the culture and places to visit 
You probably are learning about new places to visit that you didn't hear of, and you probably want to spend a little bit extra time visiting. If you packed your schedule tightly, you're probably not gonna get to visit those, and you'll have to come back next time. So just adding one or two extra days, depending, maybe you can ask the guide what they would recommend. Having that is really a nice thing to have. This allows you to utilize your guide's time learning and asking questions and getting all the details getting recommendations and then after your guide is done maybe let's say if you have five days somewhere you have three or four of them with the guide and you have an extra day you're asking all these questions to prepare for that fifth day so that you can go and make sure you can explore all the things that are most interesting to you all the while the the guide is getting to know you and recommending personalized things for you to go visit and and then it's just a great experience going to these places and being able to see these things do these things that they've recommended you at the restaurants uh, and they can also give you a bunch of history history and interesting tidbits that you'll see while there and start connecting the dots and it's like oh he mentioned this and that we should go this way or do this thing it's really quite uh quite an amazing experience uh, in being able to follow those recommendations and also be exploring on your own with those recommendations exploring those recommendations will feel exhilarating and after talking with the guide you'll have much more confidence while going to those destinations than you would if you were just to show up and it's much more efficient. Now you'll probably have kind of an itinerary for that fifth day. While if you just showed up somewhere and had no itinerary and you have five days to fill it out, you'll probably find you maybe, if you compared like doing things with a guide and doing things with fifth day on your own versus showing to up to somewhere five days without a plan, how much you get done is probably, I don't know, it, it probably depends on the person, but probably half as much as what my prediction would be. So it's much more optimal. Now let me share a story of how we implemented this rule on our uh, trip that we recently did to Turkey, where we spent four days in Istanbul, three of them with a guide, several guides actually, but the fourth day was on our own. The first three days were very packed. We walked around a lot of historical districts, saw a lot of different things, and absorbed a lot of the information and history. It is kind of overwhelming, to be honest. But there is a lot of history in Istanbul. And in trying to go down all the rabbit holes of the twists and turns in this history is, is well, it's very fascinating. The guides had their own transportation vehicles, being nice and very luxury style vans and they were very comfortable and we so we drove around in style versus if we were there on our own we probably fiddling around with public transit uh, and all the, uh, wasting time is really what it comes down to going through the sultan district for example there's a specific palace there where all the sultans live and a lot of things are barely labeled and a lot of the buildings don't really have any placards or history associated them i mean you'll see them and they'll be cool but unless you have someone there to really tell you what these buildings are used for, what kind of things they were prepared, uh, the different generations of how it was built, and, and how it played a part in the history of this greater ecosystem of the Sultan District. It's really hard to understand any anything uh, if you're just looking at it and well, it's a cool building and it's big and there's things here and you know, it's cool looking, but that's about it. That's all you're gonna get. And so the, the historical details are one thing that you'll be able to ask questions. They'll have a lot to tell you, but you'll also be able to ask a lot of questions for further details as, you, as you're looking for them. And while the first three days were very jam-packed, full of information, the fourth day was a little bit more chill. We did the public, we used public transportation and taxis to get around and a lot of this was recommended to us by the guide. And we really asked, well, we had three different guides for, for the first three days, one guide for each day. And we asked each of them recommendations of what to do on our fourth day. And so we took a lot of those recommendations and just made, built our own itinerary, uh, basically for our fourth day. And it was really cool to be able to go and, and ask them a lot of questions like, you know, we're gonna to go to this church. Can you tell us a little bit about the history uh, about it before we go, or this this palace, or this uh, this mosque, and and find out a lot of the details, and then we can go see it and and kind of piece together from what they told us and what we jotted down, piece a lot of things together. So it wasn't entirely like we had no clue what we were looking at. We had a little bit of prehistory before showing up, and now we can see it and and enjoy it in that fashion. Further, they recommended good restaurants for us to eat. We explored those and they were all great. And I really want to express too, 
that as you're going through with these guides, you'll meet some genuine connections. A lot of the guides, because they are professionals that work with people all the time, they're very open-minded individuals and very genuine people from my experience. I think you have to be to be good as a guide. And so these individuals, you'll, you'll build some good connections with. And, and a lot of the people I've met, you know, I've, I've really felt connected to by the end of some of our trips. And so they're great people to meet as guides as cr across the world. And it's a good experience. Lastly, let's talk about finding a guide. This can be tricky and varies throughout the world. Some countries have official guides with a specific curriculum that they must go to school for and learn to be able to teach and, and be able to guide others in their country. Not everywhere has this and you'll see the guides there have a very high bar of consistency and good standards of information that they'll be able to provide. With or without government regulated guides, the first place you'll start is using a search engine and searching that country and how they do their guides. This is a good place to start so you can learn how guides operate there. If they don't have an established guiding service, then start searching the area like Istanbul, local guides, private guides in Istanbul as a good place to start. If you're still not finding anything for private guides, try just searching regular tour companies. If there is something worth seeing there, there's probably a tour company going there. If you just search for tour company, and even if they're kind of bus or group package tours, that's fine. You can maybe just do the group tour, or you can reach out to that group tour company. Often they have connections with all the guides there. Their tours need guides. They probably have a list of all the guides that, that they're in connection with and they probably have good rapport with the local guides there. So they can recommend private guides to you. If not, just have one of their guides do a private tour with you as well. So it really comes down to researching the private guide or the company, the, the name of the company, and seeing if you can find some good reviews on them. And this is a good place to start, just kind of getting a good historical knowledge if, uh, if they're established of what kind of reviews they're getting. But you want to get the guide on the phone. Talk to them directly and see how well they talk to you, how they react to your questions, and how well they speak your language. And my, and for me, it's English. I need them to be able to speak English. No matter how much well, how well they know the history and culture, if I can't understand them, I can't really get the value that I'm looking for. Further, get their email or some way to communicate with them, instant messenger sometimes, and be able to ask questions. See how quickly they communicate. If, you know, be reasonable, don't expect instant communication. However, if it's like more than three days for every single response or question that you have, could be a flag that maybe they're not super reliable or too busy to really give you the time. If the guide's super busy, then they're probably gonna be worried a lot more things than giving you a good experience. Ask the guide, what are the things to do in the area? What are things they would recommend for you? Tell them a little bit about yourself and see how well they personalize the recommendations for you and how flexible that their itineraries might be. These are all, if they are flexible and they are customizing things to you and also show that they know some good details and history of the area, these are all positive signs and probably a good sign that maybe they're a good guide for you. If all feels right up to this point, go ahead and tell the guide you would like to book their services. Tell, give them the dates that you'll be there and book their time. And generally you'll want to establish an itinerary. You could be flexible and say, I want to do this kind of ad hoc and figure it out when I get there. But generally they can prepare better if you know where we want to go and where they have to take you. Give them a little bit of time to prepare and they can bring a bunch of different resources. If you kind of do the ad hoc thing, then, you know, it'll test them more. But uh, generally you'll have better experience if you tell them where you want to go. As a rule of thumb, try to book with your guide well in advance. When you get closer to when you're going to be there, there might be some timelines and maybe the guide already has certain things booked. You will find that their availability may not be where you need to. Uh, and you'll be making compromises on what you can see. And this is, could be with all the guides there because if they're already booked, they can't really have the time for you. So, And they could book out, especially in popular seasons, quite far ahead in advance. So I'd recommend at least three months in advance, if not more. 
and that's private guiding. I hope you learned something from our video and try something a little bit different on your next future trips. And if you've hired a private guide before and have a good or bad experience, feel free to leave a comment below. Do you have tips of your own you'd like to share? Let me know. If there's anything else you want to see in the future, also let me know. Take care and until next time.